we're live. And we're live. Hello. Hi, I'll cut that part out of the official YouTube version. <laughs> um, anyway, this is episode 20 of the Game Session Podcast. I'm your host, Jose slash Seth Rokage. Uh, today, we are joined by Sarah and Corey. How are the two of you doing? Lovely. Hello. I'm just, I'm just lovely. Let's see. Um, Hello. At the top of the show, I just want to go and remind everyone to like, comment, subscribe on all the socials for everyone on here. Everyone's ads are on screen, as well as available in any descriptions of wherever this goes up. Uh, Game Session Podcast is filmed live on Sundays at 6.30 p.m. PST. You can find it later on podcast services and on YouTube as both uh, the full podcast as well as individual cut-up segments for easier digestion. Um, Corey and I twi- uh, stream on Twitch, so you can go ahead and find our schedules on our links. And Sarah is known for Disneyland antics, and yeah, also I mean, and also and writing I'm articles on Movie yes. Phone. Yeah, I am. I, I I oh yeah, it's been two weeks. I yeah, am you're officially published, published. You're a published Movie Phone author, a writer. Yay! I'm officially Yay. published. An author writer, <laughs> one might say. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's not going to be the only thing I do for them, by the way. That's that's Ooh. still being out but that's not the only thing i'm going to do secrets so. secrets <laughs> yeah. Yay. But yeah yeah thank you thank you guys for all your support this is a secret thing i've i've mentioned a couple times that i wasn't going to talk about because i was waiting for it to actually happen but now it's but, not a secret yeah. now you can talk about as much it's as you want not a secret. Yeah. not a secret uh i guess really quick uh i did the top five movies of 2020 that would make really great video games so if you want to go check check that out uh the links in my twitter somewhere i tweet a lot it's probably buried to be to be fair ha- holding a secret is like it's own little kind of fun right yeah i mean it was really hard not to talk about it because i was choosing not to talk about it so i had something like tangible to actually show and the fact that it released on my birthday was even better got myself like a little birthday gift too which was nice. super cool yeah <laughs> thank you guys for all for all for all the support uh for those who reached out to me excited a bunch of people reach out i had a bunch of people re re, retweet it both on uh twitter on face facebook as 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 well it really meant a lot to me so thank you thank you guys we're proud of you sarah we're so proud (laughs) (laughs) i got paid yeah can we look forward to your next article top 10 male asses in gaming God, I hope. <laughs> top, ten, top, ten, <laughs> hard list, though. top ten himbos in all of gaming. Yes. See, now that's an easier list. I I don't know why that made me suddenly remember that I'm binging all of NCIS and I forgot how much Bugly is just a fucking himbo, and I'm just like, oh great, here we go. <laughs> uh, before we no, go, no, it's a very it's a very long story. Before we go in and jump in, I'm still relatively new to it, but uh, I do have a Patreon. Um, just if you want to help support the show, help support me. Uh, shout out to both Sly and Rama Nomad for being the first two patrons <laughs> and uh, extremely close to making it to affiliate here on Twitch. I've met all the requirements except for the uh, what is it? Concurrent viewers need an average. I think was it like three or five, something like that. But yeah, almost there. So that's very exciting. And so we don't have Blaine today. We don't have Mesa. We don't have our sanity. We never have that, though. So that's OK. You only got us. You're stuck with us. <laughs> but this actually works quick, out. Quick, make this a Kingdom Hearts podcast. Go, oh, go, no. Go, go, go. No. OK, so we're I hate about you. rocks. It's not. <laughs> oh, God, we're going to be here forever. Uh, but this is actually perfect because I don't know Blaine's level of interest in the medium. I know Mesa has said he's, he's semi interested in it, but now we can talk about it. And we don't even necessarily have to get like super into spoilers or anything. But the idea was so the three of us are the ones that are the three of us here on the show are the ones that have played it. Uh, Corey and I have both finished it. Sarah got to around the halfway points. Uh, thank you, Mr. Delaby, for for following. Much appreciated. Um, but so yeah, the original plan was to have a little full on like spoiler cast, kind of similar to what we did for Cyberpunk for our thoughts. But um, when we kind of, uh, when I kind of gauge the interest in it through the podcast crew and just how people are progressing, the excitement was a little bit lower. Um, and I don't know, I kind of went into it thinking it was going to be like this cool, expansive story where we can talk about like all the nuances, but. Um, I won't give all my thoughts right now, but if, if, if I had to describe it, it was 
That's the way I want to put it. it it's very middle of the road. It's not something I'm extremely passionate about one way or the other. I felt uh, leading up to this conversation, I felt, you know, the the drive to want to talk about this game just as well did. as it just yeah, it's just because <laughs> just like the game, it's lackluster. Um, it's yeah, it's boring. It's <laughs> I feel like it's just there. Like, I feel like this game suffers from incredible. It's, it's just i don't think it's bad like i think it's very well constructed i love the um the fixed camera angles i think it would have benefited from tank controls because there's times no, especially, no, 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 no i i i disagree with you on that but uh, um like especially the chase sequences especially the chase sequences where you'd be like uh, running from the uh from the monster or whatever it's just like it does a complete 180 flip and now i'm just suddenly darting towards him like oh that's not good yeah that was, <laughs> that was just like the weird the, the weird control because like, like i don't know if anyone's played like old school silent hill two and three when it had the fixed camera angles and you would walk into the other side of the room and then it would switch the camera angles and you would walk back it, 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 the, the medium did that constantly and i wanted to throw my controller like i was just like it's like come on, like so many unnecessary deaths being chased by monstrous Troy Troy Baker because that is Troy Baker. Oh, I didn't know that. Nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, a few roles in that game. I feel like it could have benefited Troy, Troy, Troy Baker. I was just like, I do, and and the death scenes you can't skip that stupid like ten second cutscene that plays every time you die. It it's not that long, but games. yeah. Like, uh, it felt like 10 seconds. I was like, I get it. I'm having the life sucked out of it. Can I just leave? Can I just, like, restart? Like, I'm like, please. Mm -hmm. I, I will I, say, though, sorry, for how much hate I have towards it, it's, it was very refreshing to play a game where I didn't have to worry about combat all the time and just, like, focus on, like, doing puzzles and stuff. Like, I dug that because, obviously, like, you play games where you shoot, shoot, bang, bang all the, all the time. So it was nice to play a game where the only... I mean, even though the combat section combat sections were like running through a hallway full of moths and trying not to let monstrous Troy Baker chew at my face, mm -hmm. it was like th those were all annoying. The moth sections were dumb. Before like, I, it. I can use spirit powers, I don't care. <laughs> before I ask you why you're uh, maybe is maybe passionately hate it might be the word. But before I before I ask that before <laughs> but before we. But before we dive into that, um, I guess I want to lay the groundwork a little bit in terms of like story, gameplay. Um, I don't know, like like to me, the story was OK, like it wasn't bad. It wasn't great. And like, OK, maybe there's like the most controversial opinion that anyone's had about it, where like this, this game is like lauded as like as a Silent Hill ripoff. It's taking it's a pastiche, just taking the motifs. I don't think this is a Silent Hill game in any fucking way, shape, or form. Like maybe I have like maybe 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 I have completely high standards for like what Silent Hill is, and like and I know a lot of people have the have the um, idea that uh, Silent Hill Two is like the basis for the entire for the way it's Silent not, Hill though. works. Yeah, but, but it's just it's just it's it's just the way that it's like perpetuated, like by, by especially by Konami, like the way the movies treat it, just like. That's like that's specifically Silent Hill two, but no, the movie Silent Hill one. The movie's all about a well, yeah, well, yeah, the first Silent movie is exactly it's not exactly, <laughs> but it's basically a recreation of Silent Hill one. But but I'm just speaking like the fact that Pyramid Head pops up and like other Silent yeah. Hill media is just yeah. like that. That's yeah, it's it's not right. But well, it's, it's this, also said it's also said that any game after number four is pretty much just kind of like because it was made by different studios. It's not, not exactly it's yeah it's not not exactly the silent hill that we know and love you know mm -hmm. yeah it doesn't have the survival horror it doesn't have um it has a monster it doesn't have like multiple demonic monsters lacking in the gameplay like like when you go into like people's um going to people's minds and their psyches or whatever that that's not silent hill whatsoever like you can say like maybe when you're cutting apart like the skin doors with a razor like Maybe that's a little bit of the aesthetic, but it, 
absolutely basically nothing about this game screen silent hill like me and Corey, we played through uh little hope that is infinitely more silent hill than this game oh no and, I'm, and i've off. also heard that uh the person that i'm co-oping which i'll talk about later because i'm starting i started man of man of madon finally um the person who i'm co-oping with flat out told me he's like oh if you don't like madon you're gonna love little hope because it's basically a silent hill game like he flat out said that to me he's like no, yeah it, it, silent it, hill game. and i'm like hell it yeah certainly, I'm here. it certainly is i think i think when people say that the medium feels like silent hill is more is, of the aesthetic in the atmosphere it, 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 and it, the music. <laughs> well, yeah. So it has a lot to do with Akira Yamaoka being the music, the music um, composer okay. and and director of this game. Uh, but also no, the he, fact he does he does one of the music stuff. Oh, he, he does the music. other okay. world. Okay. He does the other world while right. their in house right. guy does the like real world stuff. Right. So I think people people really compared uh the other the uh, like the spirit realm to the yeah. other worlds from silent hill i think that's what they were making the comparison mm -hmm. with that's um, what i agree with. That's, not, that's, that's, that's not even necessarily a silent hill thing though there's, there's not like two different that's, planes it, yes there no, is two no i i disagree no i dim dimensions i, I in, fundamentally in disagree silent. with that I fundamentally disagree with that. Have you There's not played three. Silent Hill three and two? I have. Oh, whatever, Corey, we're not talking about the third one. Right? They kind of like meld, but it's not like this separate. Like here's the real world and here's the spirit world. It's it's not like as cut and it's not as cut and dry as that. There is the light world of Silent Hill, and there and there is the dark world of Silent Hill. You see the dark world in Silent Hill three. There's there's the. I, I, I disagree real, with that dissemination of it. I, I played the Silent Hill 3 way more I, than possibly anybody here. I, there is two worlds. I, in I, in I possibly world. disagree with that as well. But there's, okay. uh, the really? real world, there's the fog world, and then there's the other world. What Corey just, just said. Yes. I, I disagree. There's three worlds in Silent Hill. Really? Because that's canon, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> you <laughs> I, disagree. You can't but disagree it's with that thing. I, no, it, it's, it's, it's not right. Yes, it is, dude. Oh my god, it's not. Hidden worlds in Silent Hill. Have you played a Silent? Yes, Hill? I have. I played they all of them. Out of nowhere, they don't just pop out of nowhere. You have I'm not saying they pop out of nowhere. I'm just saying it's not like this cut clear and dry. Just like here's the spirit where all the spirits live. Like they're all kind of melding together. It's not. Uh, anyway, let's let's move forward. Okay, we can talk about this all day. Oh, we're talking about the media. We're talking about the uh, media. <laughs> Uh, before we move on, I do want to note some uh, problematic elements of it. I'm not really too perturbed, perturbed, whatever the word is, by the, um, there's a, like, not even a side quest, there's like a little mention of a dude committing suicide, I don't think it was that bad. The parts that are problematic would be, um, this is probably the only real spoiler thing I'm going to get into. There's a character that, um, that rapes someone's daughter. Mm. Um, well, and, and then you dive in, and then you dive into their. I'm sorry. It's a uh, multiple kids. They only talk about the daughter, but it's implied that it's more than that. Well, yeah, that just makes it worse. Right. But but, so, like, but then, really terrible. But then, arguably, the worst part about that because uh, the daughter, I met, like. But, but yeah, like like obviously, like content warnings. We've already discussed that. Um, I believe you can depict fucked up things in, me in media as long as you do it appropriately and but for what follows that is what's the controversy uh behind it would be um you dive into the person's like psyche and it's supposed to build like sympathy like oh look how fucked up his childhood was and it's yeah, just it's like, like yeah no actions and it's like no like i i did play through that stuff and i 100 percent agree with you don't do you don't sympathize those people you don't and the game works so damn hard to sympathize them mm -hmm. like it, it even delves into like world war ii stuff in an attempt to sympathize him and it's really? like no like i wasn't i would i mean I was kind of getting that at first, but then, but then the commentary that the character was making was that, oh, you want me to, you want me to sympathize with you? Well, too bad. That's not going to happen. Like it was, it was like they were doing kind of like a bait and switch in a way, like mm -hmm. made you think that they were trying to sympathize with that character, but in actuality, it was just showing you where his darkness came from. The way I and... took it was mostly just like the writing wasn't strong enough to support that idea if that's what they were going for. Uh-huh. And um cuz cuz like yes, yeah, like you you immediately know upon like you mean this character like yes, he's done this incredibly fucked up thing. 
uh, having a fucked up past doesn't justify that whatsoever. And, and even if you have like the character who is like the insert for the player or whatever, uh, say like, yeah, no, that shit doesn't matter. Fuck you. It's still just just the, the execution of it is just super fucking off. Yeah. But. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I was going to say I was going to say a few things. Um, what was it? I'm so, so sorry. My uh, head died. So I had to oh, no worries. <laughs> no worries. Um, so with with that said, like the, the medium, the medium overall, uh, I think was a, a different a different kind of experience. There were some there were some things about the game that I enjoyed that were different and it was it was fun for what it was to me there is no replay value um and it fell short uh it fell short or flat with a lot of the writing mm -hmm. that they were trying to com they were trying to present with the story uh and then the ending was just it it didn't it like you didn't the the cliffhanger ending or whatever it, it just didn't feel earned it didn't feel like okay there wasn't super substantial or as shocking as i thought it would be you know and it it, it like they it, it's possibly leading up to a sequel or something like that but it just like uh, i don't care if that makes sense like it's just it's it's forgettable in my mind in my mind yeah i think that you know? basically describes so it I'm going to preface what I say with I never beat it because I didn't have the drive to. I got about halfway through it and I just was mm -hmm. like, I can't do this anymore. Like, I really couldn't. Um, this game, at, from, from a writing point of view, uh, suffers very heavily from, and I, I'm just going to coin this term right now, side character is a hell of a lot more interesting than main character. <laughs> Why is that the case like, in this game? Why? Like it's Marianne's boring as all hell, and I, I think she, I think she has enough funny little quips. Like I, have, I, I made a note I somewhere when you get the um, I'm talking. I, I am also <laughs> talking. This is correct. Like when she gets she, when she gets the what what not the crowbar. What's the stupid thing that you cut the, oh, the chains bolt with? Yeah, she's the like cutters, agent bolt, bolt cutter. Cutters from Resident Evil Seven. Yeah, yeah. Cutters. But yeah, but yeah. When she gets stuff like that, she's like hey, like bolt cutters. That'd be a cool agent name, agent bolt cutter. Like she has a little bit of a personality. Oh, dumb. It's oh what oh now I'm fucking forgetting his name. Corey, help me. Side dude. Side oh, dude. Thomas. Uh, Thomas. Huh? Thomas. Thomas. Thomas is so much more fucking interesting than Mary. Mary I don't. Like, I don't whole, think I agree with that. So much more interesting. The whole idea of him, of him as a character dealing with his spirit self, being like kind of psychotic, kind of kind of schizo, schizophrenic. Like it's so much more interesting than Marianne. Just. I just feel. I just feel on. like. I feel, I, like I feel like nowadays. I feel like nowadays, Marianne is kind of a, a a modern day Mary Sue character, in the sense that like we've seen the we've seen like the dark, edgy. I'm a smoker. I'm a tormented soul, but I also have a quirky yeah. personality type. You know, lead before. You know, it, it, it's it's kind of like manic pixie dream girl in a way. Um, kind of like it's a weird darker. Like, it's like a darker right, version she, of it, yeah. She's she's edgy for the sake of being edgy. While when you play Thomas's, I don't know. Again, I I don't know if you play as him again. Will you play his first section where he's going up against the the really creepy evil dude? He has so much more. Why should I be sympathetic about you? I know what you've what you've done. I'm not gonna help you. I'm gonna end this. Like he's mm -hmm. full on. Like you are a terrible person. I'm gonna ruin your your. Your, your life i don't care if you're a tiny child on the on on the inside still i don't care if you went through this all of this like depressing harrowing stuff you are still a, a monster i'm going to end you while with marianne she's like oh yeah you're a monster but i'll help you move on like no that's not how that works like just from that section alone thomas just was so much of more of an interesting character to me yeah and it's I just, just I, I think was just so boring. And again, I, yeah. I don't know if she gets better. I pro probably never know. And frankly, I don't care. Well, not, not to the, her, not to defend her or anything. Just real quick. I just not to defend her character yeah. or anything. But like 
basically i i think i think you could say that she was so blinded by the drive to uh figure out what happened uh in her past and like what happened to her sister um and like also like who even called her to the hotel in the begin to begin with I think that she just had too many questions going on that nothing it she didn't really ask herself any of those moral questions that you just asked that she was just driven by uh you know pure curiosity I think I would have cared more about that story even Jose, like I even if the pacing was earlier. I thought this really I, mean, I was like when I was like I'm talking <laughs> Oh no it's all it, it, we're we're on a podcast. We're hamming it up for this show. That's all good. I just, you know, I just have a lot. Of, like, I have a lot of feelings about this game, and it, I, I honestly think it's interesting that our feelings don't match up. But be- I just like before I ask you this fun. thing because I'm I'm really curious about it. Uh, yeah. I mean, fuck me. I guess the other world has an entry on SilentHill.Fandom.com. So fuck me. <laughs> we said it. Um, why why do you passionately hate? Uh, this game. So I passionately hate it due to my hatred for the actual company and the fact that if you look into the company's history, they have copied a lot of stuff for their past games and have gotten away with it, just kind of being their 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 own thing. Like as a writer, having inspirations is one thing, and it's totally great. But using those inspirations so blatantly and pulling it as your as your own ideas is not great. Also, the fact that they're trying to patent their like dual screen game setup when the fucking ds exists and the 2ds exists and that's my joke <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah and to me it's also the way that um what was i gonna say it it's just the way that they handled the medium with them being all like oh this is our magnum opus this is the game that we've always wanted to make no you guys just want to make a silent hill game and konami didn't give you the rights I will capitulate a little bit on so so when I said this game does not scream Silent Hill to me in any way, shape, or form, I will I will capitulate to the effect that they were they might have set out to make a Silent Hill game, but they don't fundamentally understand what a Silent Hill game is. Yeah. Mm. So what so what I believe happened with this game was if people don't know, it came out a couple months ago that Konami had been shopping the rights to Silent Hill around and they were allowing companies like development studios to come to them with, with their own Silent Hill pitch and they would either accept it or deny it and obviously they've they've accepted one we don't know which I heard a podcast but, talked about this yeah <laughs> I wonder uh, what podcast that could be looks at uh, camera my my, my <laughs> theory is that they pitched this as a, as a Silent Hill game and they had it pretty much like the story done. They had the they had the other world as the as the spirit world, and they approached Konami, and Konami said no. So they had to like, oh shit, we have to switch stuff at the last minute. So they made it a Polish Cold War horror game. I think that's probably which, the most probable theory. Because also the fact that Akira, which uh, I will say, one of my favorite things about this game is Akira Yamaoka's soundtrack is one of the best that he's done in a very long time because because the vocal tracks are so fucking good. And I don't know the name of it, but there's a track with Mary Ellen Mc, Mc, McLennan. For those who don't know, she does the vocal tracks for all the Silent Hill games. And she's duetting it with Troy Troy Baker. And it's so fucking good. There- like, I hate that it's in such a shit game because it's so good. There is a there is a scene later on. Uh, it's basically right near the end, where I, I haven't listened to like any of the soundtrack like outside of the game, but there is a music scene that happens. That's so that awesome. is probably yeah. damn worth it. No, it, it's a vocal track, but like when it happens in game, it has a decent amount of of an impact that I think that you would at least appreciate. But that would also require well, you playing a game you don't like. He's done is going to be fucking great, and I feel bad that he was given such a shit product to make such great music to, because he deserves so much better. And the one thing that scares me though is Blue Bluebird Team has come out and said that they're working on a horror game that's in a very popular franchise. And I swear to fuck if Konami gave them the rights to Silent Hill, I'm burning this entire world to the to the ground. I'm taking this podcast with <laughs> um, before them the rights to Silent Hill. Don't don't bef- do not don't like <laughs> before we move on. Does anyone just want to give their I guess Sarah just gave her closing comments. Corey, what are your closing oh. comments? 
Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much, uh, I'm pretty much with Sarah. I mean, I, I don't think I, I, I don't think I passionately hate the game as much as she does. Um, but, uh, I will say that, um, oh, oh, whoops. Oh, she did. Sarah oh, oh, wait, whoops. Go. I'm Sarah now on, on stream. <laughs> wait, Sarah's coming back. Oh, no. <laughs> Lord, you are now me and you now bear this burden of being me. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead, Corey. There we go. Okay. Um, I think I'm with Sarah in the sense uh, that uh, Konami certainly does shoot themselves in the foot uh, quite a bit. And so I literally have, until they prove me wrong, I have zero faith in how they handle Silent Hill. Um, as far as medium goes, it was an okay game. It was okay. Uh, I'm more looking forward to Resident Evil Village. So... <laughs> I, I think same here we're only a couple months for village guys i know okay. <laughs> less than two months i think i'll basically just go ahead and echo that i i don't hate this game i don't dislike it i don't love it it's very middle of the road like when i think back like did i enjoy my time with it am i glad i played it? i'm just like it was something to play that's yeah that's basically it about was, it it was something to pass the time it was yeah give uh also, give super massive uh but I, I know they already turned it down, but I, in an ideal world, I'd want Supermassive to make a Silent Hill again. Think, you, know what's, you know what's crazy? I think Supermassive may have turned it down. Or wait, did Konami no, turn Supermassive No, Konami. So uh, K Konami... The rumor is, is that the Dark Picture Saga was supposed to be a Silent Hill Saga. That is oh. the main rumor going around now. Um, that, if... that the Dark Pictures was going to be si three different games set in the Silent Hill universe and they were all going to connect because of the town oh interesting yeah. and if, if i remember correctly from the uh from the article we did it was um so a team from konami did specifically go out and search out uh super massive but then another i guess whatever higher up at konami shut that idea down yeah so like so like apparently it got to the phase where they started working on it and when the upper head saw it, they just didn't approve of it for some weirdest fuck reason. Mm -hmm. And so what became the rumor is what what became of that is what the Dark Picture Saga is now. Yeah, that it seems that. And then there's also rumors that like Sony directly like Sony Pictures um, or what's the production studio? It's like. Sony SIE Sony, Sony Japan. Or just like the production studio for Sony for games. Um, basically, Sony, Sony is Sony. Sony, I don't know. Yeah, apparently there's also rumors that Sony directly is talking to Konami about producing a Silent Hill game specifically for PlayStation. But yeah, we'll see. Well, we might see this summer because we keep hearing rumors that they're going to yeah. reveal two titles. The rumor so. is, that they, is that COVID pushed it, pushed it back again. And uh, mm -hmm. this is straight from Dusk, Dusk Golem, the Resident Evil leaker on Twitter. He's mm -hmm. like gone on record saying that, yes, yeah, something's happening. I promise something's happening. COVID just pushed back. Because if people noticed, Silent Hill is in Dead, dead by Daylight now. And that yeah. wasn't just a coincidence. Yeah. So they're trying to get it back in the spotlight. They're trying yeah, to bring it back in the spotlight. Thing. They They're going to announce two new pachinko machines. Please. Yeah. <laughs> I played pachinko. That shit's not fun. I don't get how people are addicted to it. Anyway, let's go, let's go ahead and move on.